What if I told you there's a lake in Canada so deep that if you dropped a CN Tower into it, it would disappear completely? Lake so vast, it could swallow all of Slovenia whole, yet so hidden that most North Americans have never heard of it. This is the Great Slave Lake. At 614 meters deep, it's the deepest lake in North America, stretching 469 kilometers across Canada's Northwest Territories this liquid giant holds secrets that go back millennia. Today, we're diving deep into the story of the Great Slave Lake. And as always, this is Ali, and welcome back to Urban Atlas. The lake shares its name with the First Nations people of the Dene family called the Slavey people. And these indigenous peoples were the first settlers around the lake after the retreat of the last glacial maximum. The shores of this lake are home to a few settlements, with Yellowknife being the largest, with a population of 20,000 residents. To understand the Great Slave Lake, you need to first grasp its sheer scale. At 469 kilometers long, and varying from 20 to 203 kilometers wide, this lake covers over 27,000 square kilometers, or 10,000 square miles. To put that number into perspective, the lake is almost the same size as Belgium and could contain the entire state of Maryland with room to spare. But size is only part of the story. At 614 meters deep, Great Slave Lake is deeper than any other lake in North America and Europe. Its waters are extremely clear and deep, creating an underwater landscape that remains largely unexplored. Its surface is dynamic, and that means the depth isn't evenly distributed. The lake has three distinct regions, the North Arm, where Yellowknife sits, the South Arm, and the mysterious East Arm, where the deepest point lies in Christie Bay. The East Arm has a complex shoreline, numerous islands, and great depth, making it one of the most geologically fascinating areas in all of Canada. To understand why Great Slave Lake is so deep, we need to travel back in time. The lake's North Shore contains rocks that are over 2.7 billion years old. That's because this region sits on what geologists call the Slave Craton, a portion of the continental lithospheric plate that has remained geologically stable since the Archean times, 2.5 to 4 billion years ago. And we're talking about some of the oldest exposed rocks on the Earth's surface. But how did this ancient landscape become home to such a deep lake? Well, some scientists believe it's an ancient rift, like the famous tectonic ruptures in East Africa. Others say it was caused by glaciers eroding the brittle rock along an ancient geological fault. During the last glacial maximum, massive glaciers carved and scraped across this landscape. When they retreated about 10,000 years ago, they left behind a massive depression, which filled with meltwater to become the Great Slave Lake we see today. The result is a lake that's not just deep, but uniquely deep. The official figure is 614 meters like I mentioned previously though some suggest there may be even deeper sections yet to be properly measured. The lake itself doesn't exist in isolation, it's in the heart of a massive water system. The lake is fed by several rivers, of which the Slave River from the south is the most important, and it's drained by the Mackenzie River to the west, which eventually empties into the Arctic Ocean. And the lake's northern location means its surface is frozen for 6 to 8 months each year. Ice thickness can reach 1.5 to 2 meters, that's 5 to 6 feet deep making it strong enough to support massive trucks. And this ice makes it a lifeline for the locals. You see, every winter, ice roads across the Great Slave Lake become highways, connecting large cities like Yellowknife to smaller communities like Detta. The story of modern Great Slave Lake begins with a glint of gold. Gold was first discovered by prospectors here in the Yellowknife area in 1896, but the area was considered too remote and inaccessible. It wasn't until 1935 and the arrival of commercial aircraft that serious development began here. In the 1930s, gold was discovered on the north arm of Great Slave Lake. This discovery led to the establishment of the city of Yellowknife, which would become the capital of the Northwest Territories. The gold rush transformed the lake from a remote wilderness into an industrial center. Mines like the Giant Mine and the Con Mine began extracting gold from the shores of Great Slave Lake. But this development came with environmental costs. Beginning in the 1940s, gold was extracted from ore by a process called roasting. This released arsenic trioxide and sulfur dioxide into the air. Pollution control processes were belatedly added to the procedure, but contamination still proceeded. 
today, cleaning up the legacy of gold mining remains one of the largest environmental challenges in the Northwest Territories. The giant mine alone contains over 200,000 tons of arsenic trioxide, enough to poison the entire lake if not properly contained. The lake's bathymetry, its underwater landscape, reveals a hidden world of dramatic relief. The lake basin contains underwater mountains, deep trenches, and vast underwater plains. Some underwater ridges rise 400 meters, creating submerged peaks taller than many surface mountains. Geographically, Great Slave Lake consists of three distinct basins. The north arm, which extends northwest approximately 150 kilometers, average width of approximately 50 kilometers. This arm contains the shallowest waters, rarely exceeding 150 meters in depth. The south arm, or south basin, sprawls east-west for approximately 115 kilometers, and this represents the lake's broadest section. Here, depths average 200 to 300 meters, creating vast underwater plateaus that host unique cold water ecosystems. But it's the east arm that showcases Great Slave Lake's most spectacular geography, stretching 226 kilometers into the wilderness. This arm contains the lake's greatest depths and most complex topography. The shoreline here is so convoluted that it creates over 6,000 islands, islets, and rocky outcrops. Some of these islands are geographic marvels in their own right. Blanchett Island rises 213 meters above the water's surface. And these islands aren't just regular islands, they're mountaintops of a drowned landscape. And like I mentioned previously, Great Slave Lake's geography undergoes one of nature's most dramatic seasonal transformations. Each year, over 27,000 square kilometers of liquid surface becomes solid ice up to 2 meters thick. This effectively creates a temporary landmass about the size of Haiti, complete with its own topography of pressure ridges, ice roads, and frozen bays. Hydrologically, Great Slave Lake functions as a collective point for a drainage basin covering almost 1 million square kilometers. Water from as far away as northern Alberta and Saskatchewan flows through this single geographic bottleneck before continuing north to the Arctic Ocean via the Mackenzie River system. In addition to its fascinating and varied geography, Great Slave Lake supports a unique ecosystem adapted to extreme conditions. The lake's massive size creates its own weather patterns and supports fish populations that include lake trout growing to enormous sizes in the deep. Some lake trout here can live for over 40 years and grow to weights exceeding 35 kilograms. For thousands of years, indigenous people, including the Dene, have depended on Great Slave Lake for survival. Their traditional knowledge of the lake's seasonal patterns, fish populations, and ice conditions remain crucial for understanding this complex ecosystem. And thus, Great Slave Lake stands the testament to the power of geological time and complexity of the northern ecosystems. As global demand for resources continues to grow, Great Slave Lake faces new challenges. The balance between industrial development environmental protection, and indigenous rights will determine the future of North America's deepest lake. This remains one of Canada's most remarkable and least understood natural treasures. And as always, if you like content like this, remember to give this video a like. And if you want to enjoy more content like this, remember to hit that subscribe button and keep sending me recommendations for future videos. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.